day of Advent. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be his kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and if you'll take out the insert as we uh, light the candles, for this fourth Sunday of Advent. Please be seated. Thank you. 
Assassins. A reading from Second Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him a rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind. Mine, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought my people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I've been moving around in a tent and a tabernacle, Wherever I moved among, about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, say, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince of my people Israel, and I've been with you wherever you went, and I've cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people of Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evident <clears throat> and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed the judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make your house, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Be the psalm today is from Psalm 83, 1 to 4, and 19 to 26. We will read responsibly that whole verse. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. My hand will hold fast, hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No man shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. I shall make him dominion, I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. The epistle this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, 
according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Let's stand together as we protest the gospel. <laughs> to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Notice the words, the Lord is with you. God favors you. One Bible translation says, Greetings, favored woman. Another more modern translation says, You have God's beauty inside and out. An American, in American society today, we hear many affirming messages about women. They are leaders in corporations, elected officials, and now vice president. But back in Mary's time, this positive reading was startling for many reasons. In ancient Israel, the woman's place was securely in the home to serve her husband and bear children. A woman had no function in the religion. A woman was righteous only if her husband and children were obedient to the national religion, Judaism. Just making some adjustments here. Make sure this stays up. All right. So Mary lived in the country backwater 
of northern Israel in, this, in the town, in the small town, Nazareth, near the Sea of Galilee. People in the capital city look down on Nazareth. They look down on Nazareth townsfolk. They were regarded as uncouth and uneducated. Mary was betrothed to Joseph, a carpenter, but in that poor backwards, backwards town, he might have been what we call a handyman. And Mary would, by extension, have been a handyman's wife. Further, Mary lived in a rule-bound, backward, ancient society with a caste system that held people down. Depending on one's ethnicity, one's family, reputation, gender, birthplace, or occupation, one's personhood as an individual child of God was not valued. I recently viewed a film titled Waja. The first film shot entirely in modern Saudi Arabia. I noticed a parallel between the way women are treated in Saudi Arabia and ancient Israel. It's a parallel, it's not exactly the same, but there's a parallel I identified. The film centers on Waja, a girl age 9 or 10 who simply just wants to ride a bicycle because her male schoolmates can do so. Yet the girl's mother says, you won't be able to have children if you ride a bicycle. The boys at school state emphatically to her, don't you know girls don't ride bicycles? Not only this, but she faced a, a lot of gender-based, negative, unaffirming messages everywhere she went, including from family, teachers, and friends. Fortunately, later in the film, after seeing her mother's or her daughter's industriousness, her mother says to her, if you can set your mind to something, nobody can stop you. So getting back to ancient Israel, Mary knew that it what it was like to live in a social setting based on rules and fear. Praising a woman was not normal from an authority figure, especially an angel, a messenger from God. So it makes a little more sense to me that the scripture says she was much perplexed by the angel's words. In the sequence of the Bible text, the angel had not yet said anything about a miraculous bearing of a child without the involvement of a man. So it's, we all assume that that's why she was perplexed, and probably yes, but there was more to it, I think. Mary probably thought, this is weird. This powerful being, being says, God approves of me, values me, a servant, a handmaid. No, not only that, but the angel told Mary that her child, with a capital C, would be called the Son of God. Whoa, that would blow someone's mind, wouldn't it? Not forgetting the time and place that Mary lived in, the angel reassures her that God will carry her through the possible ridicule, embarrassment, and potential punishment she could, she, she could have endured. And she knew that this might happen. Punishment for bearing a son out of wedlock. And yet, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, the angel said. Just like your elderly relative Elizabeth, the angel reassured her, don't be afraid. The angel said that her life would amount to something. Your life will amount to something. More than just being a handy man's wife in the backwoods of Israel. 
God was doing something wonderful for Mary. Mary took it to heart, then rejoiced. And later on she says, God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Here's what I've learned from this. Our words matter. What we say to others about themselves matters. So let's remember the encouragement God brought into Mary's life. Let's bring the light of God's affirmation to others in our conversations, in our greetings to strangers or friends. Let's bring light through our praise our positive words. Let's reinforce the worth of others' lives, abilities, and legacy. Let's encourage people to flourish. Ultimately, affirmation is the way of love. Let's stand together to return to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, the Atom of the of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made again. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the courts of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom and the land of heaven. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Lord of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father. We pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by our holy name. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. And that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Your prayers are invited for Jerry and Ron. Roseanne and Harry, Gordon and Florence, who live in healthcare facilities. 
Richard and Mary, Anne Marie, Monique, Trisha, Don, Sam, Claudia, Dick, Linda, Donna, Gerard, Marilyn, Wanda's family, Trish, Fern, Daniel, Karen, Mark Ricker, Avani, and Don, their and their family, Fred, Diane, Katie, Daryl, Jim, Paul, Jack, and Beth, Franklin and his family, Sam and Marianne, Janet and Andrew, Barney, Dwayne, Dennis, Donna, Ron and Norma, Rose, and the Regal family, Emma. In the diocesan cycle, we pray for Iglesia Episcopal Jesus de Nazareth, Orlando, and Iglesia Episcopal San Cristobal, Orlando. In the Anglican cycle, we pray for mission agencies and their ministry throughout the Anglican Communion, including the Mother's Union around the world. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most yes, merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And our souls be. Let's greet one another with a gesture of peace. Please have a seat. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing some of you on uh, our services at both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, if, I will be sending out an email later today. Joan Graybill, who mans the reservation line, has the opportunity uh, to go down to South Florida to be with her son, um, just to hang out together. So the number that is her home number is not a good number to phone if you want to make a reservation. So I'll just email everybody and let you know you can either cell phone or email. Um, and if you, uh, if you have not made your reservations already. Um, do we have anybody who has a birthday this week? Or an anniversary? Anybody celebrating a special anniversary? Do we have any travelers amongst us? Ooh. Yes, Cindy. I'm not traveling, but I have an announcement. Yes, come forward to the microphone, Cindy. Thank oh, you. Can you, you come to, you need to, can you come to the microphone? Okay, thank you. And, uh, and now we film it too. If you have voices just coming from somewhere else, it sounds sort of being strange. <laughs> so, thank you, Cindy. As a best remember, I have been put in charge of the Salvation Army Red Wagon. And I've noticed since we've come back to church that it's slim things. So I have a challenge for you today. Uh, if we have 25 people in church every Sunday, or even 12, um, we should have 12 or 25 donations. So I'm challenging you this week, every time you go to the grocery store to buy things for you and your family, that you buy at least one thing and bring it either Christmas or Christmas Day or next Sunday, whenever you come this week, so that that wagon is overflowing all over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Yes, Barry. 
One quick reminder uh, to anyone who may have a, a pledge card that you have not yet filled out, your vestry would like to see you mail it in. Uh, and especially for those who may watch be watching this uh, on video, uh, if you have a card, please do fill it out. We will be making our budget plans in January. Thank you. Thank you. Walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, as an offering and a sacrifice to God. joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever that sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. 
he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and amending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you. 
together and turn back to our bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Set us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from your own path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We're going to sing as we recess out, Blessed be the King who is coming.